Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. And I realize it is past the official ending date for the hashtag scavenger hunt 2021, which was April 1st, and this is now April 4th. I want to complete the project and it may take me instead of April to August, but I do want to complete it however long it takes. So I hope that you'll go ahead and join me, bear along with me, because it takes me a long time to figure out what I'm gonna do. And it takes me a little bit of time in between videos to get to a point where I can do another page, which is part of the reason why I did not complete. So I have my little jar here that has the remaining prompts. I have my list that has all the prompts on it so I can mark them off as I go. And if you have joined me before, you know the drill. I am mixing these up, but once I get done mixing them up and I tell you my eyes are closed, trust me, my eyes, whoops, are closed. So sometimes I miss the jar. Sometimes I mm, don't realize that I have dumped everything out. Sometimes I am very shocked and perplexed as to what I am going to do with the combination of prompts that I draw out. But thus far, they've all turned out well, and I've learned a little bit about myself. So here we go. I am, first off, I'm taking off my regular glasses and putting on my reading glasses, crafting glasses, my need to see close craft uh, glasses. All right, my eyes are closed. And these want to stick together as well. So sometimes I'm feeling around, but it's mostly to make sure that I only have one. So there's one. There's two. And three. I'm actually, that's twice now that I haven't dumped anything out of the little bowl. That's that's kind of odd. Maybe it's because the numbers are getting lower, they're not overflowing so much. So let's see what we have. We have playing card. We have a page about a fib, which is a friend in the box. I had to ask what that meant. And you know what? I'm going to redraw that one because I need to learn some more about friends in the box. So I'm gonna set that one aside. The other one that I drew was food packaging, and I'm going to get my little jar over here, and I'm going to redraw for that third one because I need a little more context on that friend about a friend in the, let's see, prompt about a friend in the box, a fib. So, okay, and I have a black and white, ooh, a black and white page, hmm. Okay, so let me think about this for a minute and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm not sure where my camera cut off, so I'm gonna kind of go back. I think that I still had the camera on when I was drawing all the lines, but in case it wasn't, what you're going to do is just not completely fill, fill, fill your page. You want to have white space but you do want straight lines and you just want to go every which direction all over your page. And then for each of those intersections, you are just going to kind of curve that intersection just ever so slightly. I got a little heavy handed on these two. And I said earlier, and I don't know if it got on there, I saw this on Pinterest today when I was just scrolling. And I thought, oh, that looks really cool. And then when I drew a black and white page out of the pot, I thought, oh, okay, I'll try that there. So you're just going to go through and in each of these intersections, just ever so slightly, curve that intersection and then color it in. And I'm going to do all of these 
and then I will come back. I can already tell you, on your first time out, try to make sure that you do not have multiple, meaning more than two lines going through an intersection because these are, well, they're boogers. That's what they are. They're just boogers because it takes entirely too much thinking. And this should be pretty easy because all you're doing is rounding an intersection. But when you have this many lines in this close proximity, it's not so simple. And can actually, I can see it getting a little frustrating. Like this video has been a little frustrating already because I keep thinking I'm recording and I look up and I have not hit record. So I don't know if I'm recording myself um, rummaging for things or blowing my nose or missing out on some information that I really think you need. So I'm going through and saying it three times. And then when I go through and edit, it is going to be very time consuming because you probably don't need to hear those same things three times. So <laughs> this is not as relaxing as it could be. But that said, when you go back, if you see something that you don't like, like I'm not sure I like this little part here sticking out by itself, I'll just go back in and draw that. You may not have even seen what I was looking at first, but I did and it bothered me, so I fixed it. Pretty easy on that one. And this actually reminds me kind of like the, uh, what was it called? The, the uh, Zentangle. The Zentangle that we did on another one of my videos. And it was supposed to be mindless too. And if you're like me, you're going to every, every, over, think every step of the way and that's like the opposite of the purpose the purpose is for it to be relaxing and not mentally taxing you should be able to think about other things while you're doing this so don't stress about it if you're trying this for the first time I would suggest making it simple on yourself and don't have multiple intersecting lines. And all you got to do is make sure that your lines don't cross. Don't cross the streams. And it will be much more relaxing for you. I can about guarantee it. I'm about afraid to pause my camera now. You know, I just had a thought, if you wanted to, you could not worry about making the curved lines and just draw straight lines and make little uh, diamonds or hexagons or however many pointed shapes they ended up being. 
and that would take some of the angst out of getting these curves right. I probably could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble, but the ones that were on the Pinterest page, they were curved, they weren't straight. So I didn't think about that until after I was doing it. So, learn from me. And try doing it with straight first. It probably would be a lot simpler, probably would go a lot faster, and probably would have a whole lot less thinking <laughs> involved. I'm looking really quick to see if I missed any intersections. I'm trying not to judge myself too harshly. I think I will try this again, but I do think that I'll try doing it with the straight lines so that it is all diamonds at the connectors so I'm not struggling with myself so much over whether it looks perfect or not, which we should all remember that we're not perfect, but it doesn't stop us from trying to do things perfectly. All right, so that is the black and white page. I like it. I, like I said, I will, I will do that again. Well, now I really kind of don't want to, uh, <laughs> don't want to cover it up. All right, so I pulled out this sheet, and I think, I think. I'm going to just tear some of it. And what this is, this is a thesaurus page that I have decoupaged tissue paper over. Well, first, first I stamped off on it. I used it to clean brushes and clean off stamps. And so that's what the color is behind it. All of that color is behind the, the um, tissue paper. And so I am going to tear around this. I have a video on how I do dry decoupage and I'll try to remember to link it below along with a link to where, to the Pinterest page where I saw this idea. So you can see what it was, <laughs> was supposed to look like or what the original looked like. That's probably a better way of putting it. All right. And I am just going to tear out these pieces of furniture. I'm not sure yet just where I am going with this because I have had nothing. And usually when I'm doing the background is when it pops into my head. Oh, this is where I'm going with this. So far I've had not a thing. And you know, sometimes maybe that's a good thing because I've had an awful lot on my mind and maybe something that is just mindless and not uh, let's see, goal-oriented. I think this is still goal-oriented, kind of. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to tear that off, or I think I'll tear that off, but I won't be able to use that little part, I'm pretty sure. Um, but instead of trying to, th oh, I'm trying to get this message across or this message across, I have been inundated with messages coming across as I am doing these challenges and maybe I'm just getting a little break this time all right so let's see this isn't part of the challenge yet but I do want to go ahead and figure out what I'm doing with it I'm putting that up there simply because I have a straight line and a straight line and that is the only reason I'm putting that up there just like I am going to put this right over here, simply because of the straight lines. 
that that doesn't work well with the table. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I put the table over here and the chair goes behind it like it's sitting at the table. I don't know. Maybe I won't use that. Maybe, maybe I'll use it down here and put this chandelier up here and not use this portion. I don't know where I put the other little piece. There it is. I'll put those to the side and I am going to tear so, so that I don't have this straight edge because now the straight edge is just going to look out of place. What place I am thinking of, I don't know. Like I said, there's nothing to say that it's out of place except for in my head it would be out of place. And so I want it gone. Tear off a little bit more of this. Am I recording? Yes. Sorry, now after the first part of the video, I am so worried about not recording that I'm probably going to keep checking that I'm recording and just be totally irritating to all of you. All right, I'm gonna have that come off the page just a little bit because I don't want it up so high. And this was going to go here. Was that gonna go there? Yes, because this chain needs to be at the top and it'll come off the page and I'll tear that as well. And I think, I think I'll leave that right there. Now I am going to make this a pocket. So I need to go ahead and cut off a straight line there at the bottom. And I don't cut straight lines well at all, but I think that this will work because I have a line of words there that I can aim at for my cutting line. Yep, that worked. So now I will just put glue here, here, and here, and I will have a pocket at the corner of the page right there. There we go. And we'll let that dry while I figure out how the rest of this is going to work. Still don't have any words in my head to put with this, but I do want to make this into a journaling card. And that means I need to be able to um, write on one side of it. And this is really, really a slick surface. And so I am going to take um, a nail file it's one of these that's like foam core in the middle. And so it's just, it's simply sandpaper. That is, that is applied to the foam core. But with all of this uh, surface glossiness that's on here, it is textured because that way it doesn't slide out of the hands of the person who is holding the card but it's also very glossy, which is why they had to put the texture on it because otherwise it's really super slippery. But that also makes it very hard to journal on. So I am doing this and that gives it an aged look. Shouldn't have done that. I flipped off that dust right on my picture. Oh well, we'll see what happens with that. This gives it an aged look as opposed to this shiny side. Now, I want that side to be out, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and sand off this side too. All 
All right, so that is all sanded off so that I can get some um, journaling paper and I can glue that on there and I know that it will attach itself pretty well. Okay, so here is my journaling paper. And the way I like to do this is I put glue stick haphazardly on the back of the card and I don't go from edge to edge to edge to edge. I kind of go in the middle and miss a lot of the perimeter. And then I put my journaling paper on and I try to align it so it's somewhat straight. I push that down and then I set it to the side so that that glue can dry. If I try to pull it off now, it's all just gonna come off. So I'm gonna set this to the side while we work on some of this other stuff. I know that I want this to just go directly onto the page. And I want this to just go directly onto the page. And again, I am going to follow the words, the bottom of the words, to get my straight line across there. I think I need another glue paper. Oh, because I grabbed my note paper that has my um, <laughs> that has my prompts written on it, where I've written down what page numbers, what num numbers I needed to uh, get out. Yikes! Okay, set that out of my reach this time. <laughs> It's so far away from me that it's hard to see if I'm straight up there. But I think, I think that's straight up and down. The chandelier's gonna look weird if it's hanging sideways. Okay, I had to wait for my clock to play its music and then I went and grabbed some glue pages so I didn't grab another page that I didn't need to be grabbing. All right, now I want to incorporate this in here somewhere. somewhere. And I just wanted that hint of red. I have a hint of red right there. I've got red right there. And I may incorporate some red in this part. I still need to come up with what I'm going to say. But I do think that I wanna go ahead and put this down on the page. Hmm. No, I think I like it over toward the edge because then it's not in the middle of things. I'm not trying to take front and center. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down and it'll go behind that chair. Decided that I didn't want that straight cut that was across the top still showing. So there, and then when the glue is dry, I will come back and trim the excess off that's hanging off the side of the paper here. But I'll let it get dry first. And I will go ahead and get this piece glued down as well.
All right, so I believe that my glue stick is going to be very, fairly close to being dry. So what I do is I take and I'm just holding on at the bottom part of the card to halfway up, no further than halfway up. And I pull that paper off and you get a ragged edge. And then you are going to do the same thing again. Hold no closer than halfway up. And then you're going to kind of do the same thing on the edges, although it's a little harder on the edges to get that far apart. And this is where I use my file again, is I just come through, ooh, yucky noise. So I'll talk and then I'll silence this part. I come through with my file and I just go around the edges that have any of the paper hanging over and it will give you a clean edge just like that little piece. So there is that. My book pages are a little aged so I think I am going to just not a whole lot using my brushed corduroy. I'm just going to kind of hit this a little bit just to kind of tie this and this card together. And I'm gonna kind of do the same thing on the back. It says black and white, and I've got the black and white. This just happens to be a little more aged. And this is going to go into this pocket right here as a journaling place. I can write on the back of it and then tuck it in there. It looks like it's just a piece of the artwork because it is a part piece of the artwork but it's also just a little bit more. All right, I am going to go look at my words because I have an idea what I wanna say and I'm going to look for what I need to have. I'll be right back. All right, I have, <laughs> I have some stuff picked out and this is the first time I've used this book. It's Tim Holtz, Ideology Big Talk didn't see this little word over here, snarky. So, um, I'm not really a snarky person and I don't get sarcasm. So if I ever inadvertently do one of those two things, completely by accident, I didn't mean to do it and probably don't even realize I did it. So forgive me in advance if you ever feel that I am being snarky or sarcastic because it's totally dumb luck if I am. All right, I have three quotes though that I think are perfect. I think they describe me perfectly and we'll see. But I wanna get these on to the page as well. Mm, I can't pick it up. So I have these two pieces and I believe these two, I'm not sure that this one's Tim Holtz. I'm pretty sure that one's Tim Holtz. Only saying that so that if you're wanting to find them, number one, you know kind of where to look. Number two, you know that I don't know for sure. All right. And then this one is a washi sticker. And so I have my 15 and my two, and then I'm gonna have to make the um, number 85 work out of this one. And I've got an idea for it. So let's see. I'll go ahead and share the quotes with you. This one says, I'm multitasking. I can listen, ignore, and forget at the same time. This one says, at times I'm grateful that thoughts don't actually appear in bubbles over our heads. Although I have said at times, did I just say that out loud? <laughs> and then this one, I'm starting to think I will never know better. So I am going to figure out, I think maybe, I think that's gonna work right there. I am going to go ahead and stick that down. That fits perfectly. And I'm gonna hit that with a little ink just so it kind of fits with everything else on the page. It doesn't take a lot, but I just want that subtle little hint of color so that it's not stark white. Uh, let's see. 
this washi sticker. I may put this over that. Huh, that nine's kind of throwing me off because nine's not one of my numbers. And it's fine that it's on the bottom because that doesn't show, but I may have to come up with something to cover that up. And I don't think that's going to do it because that just sticks right out. Just sticks right out, sticks right out. Hmm. I wonder if I could use this piece here that just looks odd. Still looks kind of odd. Maybe I need to use the chair back and then it would stick up. Let's see. Will that slide down in there? Yeah, it does. Okay. I'm going to kind of curve that a little bit down that way. But other than that, I'm not going to worry about that because it's not real, real straight because it's where the, ta the um, page was torn out of the book. And then that covers up the nine and doesn't throw off the rest of the, the um, idea that I have. Let me make sure that all the glue is down below the top of the card. There. And that's still a playing card, so it still works. There we go. I'm good with that. All right. Let's see. What's next? What's next? This one's harder. I'm, I don't have... I really have not... Hmm... Maybe the struggle that I've had with the rest of the pages was helping me because <laughs> now I'm stuck. Uh, let's see. I wonder if I if I do this. Then I've got that fifth piece on there, and then I've got, because when this is not in there, then it's an even number, and I think maybe, maybe I just feel like I need to use that for some weird reason. I don't know, but I'm going to use it for some weird reason. I don't know. Except for the reason that I feel like I need to use it. Hope that works for you, because it works for me. My glue stick is down to the part where I have spider webs. <laughs> and you don't get spider webs until you get down to the bottom, but it's really, really strange that you get spider webs with a glue stick. I'm used to that from my um, my liquid glue, my Fabrifix or Fabri-Tac or whichever one I happen to be using at that particular time. But I'm not used to my glue stick doing that until it gets down to the very end. Hey guys, look, you don't have to um, listen to a long angsty story. At least not yet. Of course, the page isn't finished yet, so we don't know. All right, we've got the two. Oh, I glued that on there and I wasn't ready. Okay, I'll just have to deal with it from here. Um, Let's see. I am going to
Yep. I'm going to put that right there, and I'm going to put this kind of at the top of the uh, chandelier. And it's going to go straight across. Oh, and you see how I just completely ignored my glue paper sitting over here? And let's see, I'm going to put this one right smack in the middle of the page. And then I'll figure out what spot needs to have that washi sticker. There we go. I forgot my word. I already have red there, so I'm feeling like hmm. let me take the journaling card out. And I think that that'll go there. And then if I need to add something else to balance everything out, I can do that because I will have used all of my prompts and my numbers and won't be worrying about how to incorporate them. And I do feel like I need something right in here, and I know that I need to find uh, the way that I was going to mark 85 on that one. So I will be right back. So, several days ago, since today is the 9th, and I completed this on the 4th, I created this, and I was having a heck of a time, as is evidenced, um, with getting my camera to work, and I don't know why, and for some reason, the last few bits that I did on this didn't get recorded, and... You've already seen what has happened between the day of recording. Or, yeah, you. And you've already seen what happened the day after the recording of this video, just previously. But I, as I was um, going through and editing, trying to edit all the bits and pieces that I did get put together, together into one co cohesive video I realized that I didn't get all of the pieces and so now I am shooting this now just so you can see where I ended up on this piece and I believe that where the video finally stopped was hmm I think I had this sticker on here 
I'm not sure I had either of these two on here. And let's see, I did not have these on here and I didn't have these on here. So I went ahead and added the other two Tim Holtz stickers or three, however many I was missing or had on here. And then I went in with these stickers that are hole reinforcers for your papers that you use like when you make a three ring binder. And these are in pretty shapes and had a color that just happened to go perfectly with this right here. And I wanted to kind of spread that across the page a little more because these two reds are different reds than this one. And I feel with those two next to each other, they're okay. But with the this one being by itself, it just looked odd. So I wanted to add a little more. So I added one of the reinforcers around the number 85 on this ticket. And then I took three of the centers off of the other sheets that are in here. There's 102 in, of the stickers in here. So I think mm, there are five sheets of these stickers. And I just put three little dots over here. And then I went in, and I don't know what brand of sticker this is, but it had, oh, look, there's a, it is the Paper Studio. It says right there in that corner. I couldn't even see that until I put it on the paper. This is from the Paper Studio, and it's just black scroll work. But I thought that it went well with all the scroll work there and with the fanciness of the chairs and the tables. And so I used two of those scrolls to frame this quote in the center. And I used one over here just to kind of pull that together because this was still looking like it was just weirdly there, <clears throat> weirdly there. So this is the finished page. Um, I like it. I had a heck of a time recording making it, although I enjoyed making it. And I've had a heck of a time since I completed making this. But in the end, it all came out. Um, I have been new car shopping and think that I know which car I'm getting. So that part's going to work out. And I also um, just recently posted a video of what I'm still working in in this area that is spread over half of the basement and in a closet in the basement. And I still have stuff stored in boxes in one of the extra bedrooms upstairs on the second floor. And my studio building has been delayed a little bit longer. <sighs> so I am trying to get things together, but I did like doing this and I can't wait until the next one that I get to do. Until then, I hope that you are doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself and I hope you're taking care of each other. Remember to be kind always. Bye.